welcome to session seven. Yeah, we're absolutely flying through the Life Shapes course. So welcome back. And this week, yes, session seven is the heptagon, the seven-sided figure. Now, I haven't got a seven-sided snack. I'm afraid there just aren't any seven-sided snacks out there, but you may have made something specially. The only seven-sided thing that I could uh, think of tonight for our illustration is this, the 50 pence piece. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides on the 50 pence piece. Or of course, you could have had a 20 pence piece. There you go, the seven sided coins. So let's draw our seven sided figure tonight. Not easy, not easy. I have, I have to admit, cheated a little bit and made some marks on the paper. Seven sides. It's a bit wonky. A seven-sided figure. Remember, we are doing the Life Shapes course. It's all about life as Jesus lived it. We're learning from Jesus. We've got our L plates on and we're learning about life to the full, life in the kingdom of God. Now, tonight our seven-sided figure helps us remember seven things which you may remember from school. Did you ever talk about Mrs. Gren? M R S Let's keep going round. G R E N. Mrs. Gren. This is the mnemonic that helps us, you might remember from your biology, that remem helps us to remember the essential characteristics of every living thing. For something to be alive, it has to demonstrate these seven characteristics. And we're going to go through them one by one and see how there is a spiritual element to each one. We can interpret Mrs. Gren spiritually to see if we're spiritually alive, if we've got the life of Jesus within us. We, as the church, are the body of Christ, a living organism. And if we're alive, we've got to express all seven characteristics. Okay, what's the first one? M for movement. Movement. Every living thing moves. And we've got to move if we're alive spiritually. We, Jesus said, he called the disciples together before he went up to heaven in Matthew 28, gave them the Great Commission, go into all the world. The Christian faith, the life of Jesus is all about traveling. It's about going, moving. There's so many ways to sort of interpret this through the life of Jesus, but he wants us to be on the move constantly, a pilgrim people being prompted by the Spirit, led into new things, constantly changing and growing and developing. So, movement. Secondly, respiration. Respiration. Basically, breathing. Respiration is breathing. You've got to breathe in the breath of God. The Holy Spirit, that word spirit, ruach in Hebrew, it's the same word for breath or wind. You breathe in the life of God. Are you rushing around, burning yourself out, working too hard and not taking time to breathe? To breathe in. Every living thing respires, has to take in oxygen. Or of course, the natural world, the trees, they take in carbon dioxide. That's why we need them so much. The, our environmental crisis needs our living things to be both animals and plants. Anyway, the, the, um, the breathing in the life of God, the breathing that Jesus wants us to do, is so often the equivalent of prayer. Prayer is what is, is, what is considered breathing in, a spiritual, in the spiritual life. 
without breathing, without praying and communing with God and breathing in his Holy Spirit, we cannot survive. Don't resist the Spirit of God, the breath of God. Breathe deeply, breathe deeply if you want to live a healthy spiritual life. Okay, S. Sensitivity. Sensitivity. Sensitivity is the S in Mrs. Gren. Now, sensitivity in the body is all about being able to sense, having a nervous system, being able to respond to your environment, being able to react, being able to sense what's going on around you. And we need to be sensitive to God, the promptings of God to hear his voice, sensitive to one another, like a body, a physical body has to work together, uh, all the different parts working together, being sensitive to each other so that we can work in harmony and work together and be sensitive to the needs of the world, to the, the what's around us so that we can respond to the needs of the world and serve the world and show the world the love of God. We've got to be sensitive to our environment, to what's going on. Sometimes the church just becomes so inward focused and taken up with itself, it's not sensitive to anything else outside and is no use to anyone. We've got to be that church that's sensitive to the needs around us. Okay, G. G stands for growth in Mrs. Gren. Every living thing grows if it's alive, if it's healthy. Any healthy thing grows, and I'm talking about spiritual growth and numerical growth. We, of course we want to grow the church and attract new people and draw people in, but also we've got to be a church that's growing spiritually, growing in the likeness of Christ. That's what Life Shapes is all about, learning from Jesus and becoming more like him, growing. Healthy organisms grow. They just do. They don't focus on growth, they just focus on being healthy and the result is growth. Okay, the R down here is reproduction. Reproduction in Mrs. Gren. If we're going to be alive, every living thing, every living organism, if it's alive, it has a way of reproducing, reproducing the next generation. We have to make, this is different from growth, of course, we want to grow, we want to grow spiritually, we want to grow numerically. But actually, each one of us is called to reproduce the life of Jesus. We've talked a little about, about this through Life Shapes. Reproduce our gifts and our ministry, but actually reproduce people. We want to make new followers of Jesus, new Christians in our evangelism. We want to reproduce Jesus. And also, we want to reproduce the next generation. As we grow, we, us oldies, we're not going to be here forever. We'll soon be gone. What about the next generation? Are we raising up and reproducing ourselves in the next generation? Are you doing children's ministry? Are you doing youth ministry? We've got to be reproducers. We've got to reproduce if we're going to be healthy and stay alive. If we don't reproduce the next generation, the church is finished. The church is finished. We've got to raise up these leaders of the future. So there I'm throwing out the challenge. Okay, the E. Every living thing has to demonstrate excretion. Excretion, we have to excrete. I know it sounds a bit gross, but if you don't get rid of the toxins, if you don't get rid of the waste, if you don't get rid of the waste products from your body, you will die. You have to excrete. Every living thing has a way of excreting. Whether that's breathing out or going to the toilet, we have to excrete. And of course, spiritually, excretion is all about repentance, is about getting rid of the sin that builds up in our lives, turning away from sin. Personally, I need to get sin out of my life. I need to live a life that is pleasing to God. In relationships, we have to get our relationships right where the sin and selfishness comes in and damages our relationships. And as, as a, 
Well, let me just say something about that, our relationships, because Jesus is very strong on this. Of course, he says in the Lord's Prayer, which we did last time, the hexagon, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Unforgiveness. If you store up unforgiveness in your life, it will kill you. You've got to get rid of it. That's excretion. Forgiveness is getting rid of unforgiveness from your life. And Jesus says, Matthew chapter 18, Jesus gives us clear instructions. If your brother or sister sins against you, if sin comes into your relationship, how do you get rid of it? You go to them and sort it out just the two of you. That's how you deal with sin in relationships. You sort it out just the two of you. If you can't sort it out, then invite one or two others in to help you to work it through. And if they won't listen to them and you, the thing breaks down, then take it to the leadership, take it to the leaders of the church and ask for sort of intervention to come. It's a clear model. You start just the two of you, then if you need help, you get help. And then if it really breaks down, you have to have a ruling. You know, you have to go to that route of auth looking for authority to make a decision on things. That's how we sort relationships out in the church. And yet so often we don't go to the person. We keep it inside, all that resentment and hurt, unresolved unforgiveness. Or worse still, we go to others. We gossip, we complain, we run others down instead of dealing with the issue. So that's a specific teaching on excretion. But we've got to get rid of the sin in our lives. It's poison. If you don't get rid of it, you're going to get sick and you're going to die. Every living thing has to excrete. And the, the last one, every li living thing needs nutrition. Nutrition. You've got to eat well. You've got to have a healthy diet if you're going to grow and be a healthy follower of Jesus if you're going to live well. Jesus said, you know what he said in John chapter 4? He said, my food is to do the will of God. Do you remember he, went to, he was talking to the woman at the well in John chapter 4? Uh, he already said to her, food and drink. He said, I can give you the water. You drink my water, you'll never be thirsty again living water. Wow, I want that water, she said. But he sent the disciples off to get some food. They came back and said, oh, you know, uh, we got some food. And Jesus said, I have food that you know nothing about. What? They said, what? What kind of food? Has somebody given him some food? He said, no, my food is to do the will of God. That was Jesus' food. His food and drink was obedience to God. That's our food. That feeds us being obedient to God. How do we be obedient? By devouring God's word. God's word. Jesus, the living word, is our food. And, and that's what that the bread of life. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. That's nourishment to our souls. And of course, the word of God, the Bible, is how we know Jesus and how we understand God's will and how we obey that will. It, it's our it's our meat and drink. It's our food. We've got to know our Bibles and read our Bibles. If you're going to be a healthy follower of Jesus, if you're going to be a living organism, a healthy living organism, you've got to eat right. You've got to eat well. And we know that having a healthy diet takes effort. A healthy diet takes more time to prepare the food. It might be more expensive to buy the food. It makes more planning, more thinking. If you're going to have a healthy spiritual diet, you've got to work hard, get up early, plan it in, read God's word every day. It doesn't just happen. You can't just grab a bit of fast food and quick nibble here and there, keep you going. No, you've got to plan, organize, and get yourself into God's word every day. That's healthy nutrition. Of course, sometimes we talk about the, the word of God as the, the bread of life and the spirit of God as the water of life. You need to eat and drink well. So, there you go. Mrs. Gren. How to stay healthy, to live the life that Jesus has for us, and how to grow. Maybe a quick health check. A quick health check. Am I moving with Jesus? Is my relationship with Jesus dynamic, or have I sort of stagnated? Am I stuck in the same place? Is it time for a change? Is Jesus opening a new opportunity, a new relationship? You know, maybe just a change of my pattern. 
uh, of life, my timing of prayer or whatever. I just got to keep moving. Maybe a new ministry is opening up, a new team for me to join at church or a new opportunity with my neighbours and friends, a new friendship. You know, how can, uh, do I need to, or perhaps a big move. Is it time to move house or to move job or to move country? You know, is God calling me on to the next thing? We're always moving in the Christian life. Respiration, are we breathing? Are we taking that time to breathe in the breath of God? Or are we trying to do everything in our own strength? It's like that pendulum swinging from the semicircle, you remember? Abiding, Res respiration. Are we sensitive to God, to the promptings of God and to the needs around us, ready to respond? Are we growing? Are we growing spiritually? Am I? Have I grown spiritually? Am I more mature? Am I more confident in my faith than I was a year ago? Am I learning, reading, growing in my faith? Reproduction. Am I reproducing the life of Jesus that is in me in others? You know, am I seeing new Christians? Am I nurturing faith in the next generation? Excretion. Do I need to do some forgiving? Is there sin in my life that I need to get rid of? and nutrition. How's my diet? Do I have a healthy diet of the word and the spirit? There you go. Mrs. Gren for the healthy life in God.